And we're back. Last time we ran out of stones, so we started building some barracks, which is uh, which are going to come in quite handy. We also assigned those stockpiles everywhere, so things could be carried inside. And also, since everything is inside now, we can remove this wagon here. So we're just hitting X here, and the next time a carpenter has time, he will break the wagon down into three wood we can use to craft things with. Just like any normal wood we had cut down in this forest here. We're also looting this uh, cobalt thief. And soon enough we will not have to deal with those anymore. Well, we will, but they won't pose any kind of threat. Because we should have a well-armed and well-armored squad of um, highly motivated military dwarves over at the gate, or well, the drawbridge, and thus blocking pretty much the only entrance to the fortress itself. Now I think I'm going to make this wall here a bit higher. We might want to have this uh, two tiles hall, uh, high, at least on the bits that can be accessed by this uh, small hill here. Oops. Because sharpshooters could still climb up here and shoot into the pasture. And that's something I'd rather not have. Because even from up there, bolts pretty much hurt when they hit your dwarves. And um, that's something we'd want to avoid. Also, why is this guy using bronze bolts? I specifically told my dwarves not to use those. As you can see here, hunters are using... Oh, oh no, I forgot to do that. Hunters are supposed to use bone bolts, and I guess they can have 150 or so. The, these guys don't shoot, and these guys can have bone bolts for both, or for, for combat and training, and can have... We, we want to add one more. Where's the... Uh, okay, C. We want more bolts. We don't really want to use the other things, because those are foreign weapons and we can't craft those. So we'd have to buy them or find them, and that's not the best way to keep a supply. So I want those to be metal bolts. You can have 150 of those, and you don't use those in training. Because training bolts often break, and I don't want to bother building a channel. So, yeah. You can. Um, preserve bolts by using some small tricks. Uh, it's kind of the in-game mechanic, if bolts doesn't break, or any ammunition doesn't break, if it falls down one, one Z level, so if it falls down one level in height. So if you kind of make a wall people are going to shoot at, like say here, and dig a channel down here, so things can fall down, <coughs> the ammunition would be preserved and would not break. That is useful if you want to, well, if you need the, the ammunition and want to preserve it. So is this, no, that's not rotten yet, so we can budge it. Oh, it's already tasked. Let's see when the uh, butchering actually happens. In the meantime, I will add a tunnels workshop here. I'm gonna have that somewhat close to the buttery because we don't want the we want to have the raw hide as accessible as possible, and that means we have to keep it somewhat close. I'm also going to do something for convenience. I'm going to have a few bins crafted out of wood because we don't have any metal yet. I want wooden bins, let's say 30 of those. 
because, well, why the hell not? Now we need to be careful with those because they will, the dwarves will try to store those crafted, those finished goods in bins. And elves don't like bins, so if we're gonna sell one of those to the elves, they will say, no, you've been hurting trees, we don't like you anymore. And then they will refuse to trade to trade with us any further in this season. I think if we do that too often, they will actually start hating us. And uh, make a real fuss about this. So, yeah, that's something you want to be careful with. Extremely careful with. Let's just uh, see if there are any eggs we can uh, preserve here. We have duck eggs. Let's forbid those. Because I can. <coughs> uh, ideally, I would try to say save one batch of eggs for each bird type each year. I do have a kind of weird um, butchering habit. I'm gonna tell you about that when the time has come. And we will we'll butcher a lot. So what I'm usually trying to go for is being able to maintain a certain stock of animals without having or well without having to let any of them die of old age, because I'm not sure you can butcher those if they die of old age. Let's see if uh, let's add another bit of this wall here, because the sooner we have walled this off, the better we're off. We have 31 granite blocks again. So, uh, we can build pretty much three more of those. I can't make pieces of wall longer than 10 units, so I have to do it like that. Unpause the game again, it goes into pause as soon as you craft something. Well, as soon as you place a building. And now we wait. And you no, we didn't get good uh, eggs. It's unclaimed. There's gonna be a hen over here too, uh, very soon. It should go over there. Well, it has already been over here. No, it has probably already been here and the eggs have been stolen by a dwarf, so we won't get them anymore. We also have some pretty busy dwarves now because we have started mining, uh, we have, oh, we can also build the final beds here. So now our dormitory is finally finished, we're not going to do anything else over here. What we are going to do later on, let me just see if I have a if I have an engraver here. I have. So we're gonna have this guy stop doing anything. Although I'm sure he will kill, uh, still go fishing a lot. And we'll assign all this to be smoothened. So this is all going to become smooth stone, which will increase the room's value. Uh, having a value of the room means the dwarves are happier if they are in there, and they are going to spend a lot of time in there. Because this is going to be our dining room, and the dining room is always a room that is frequented by lots of dwarves. <coughs> Okay, I think the frame rate drops pretty heavily every time I uh, tap out to Skype, so I'm gonna try to kinda not do that for a moment. And uh, I'm gonna see where I come to, I'm going to dig the next mine. We have a ton of stones here. Well, not a ton, but it will last us for a while. And what I can do now is. Well, pretty much two things. 
and I, one of them is I could mine out personal rooms here, which I will have to do eventually, or I could mine out kind of a cemetery area, a cemetery area down here, which is also something I'm going to need pretty soon. Oh, well, we just got a dwarven baby, which is not going to do anything right now. It's just going to be fairly unproductive. And we have, look at those prepared meals. We have a ton of them. Uh, can I view them? No, sadly I can't. We have a ton of prepared meals. And that is because you get a lot of food out of cooking. I think uh, it's kind of it's kind of based on the original stack size. If you prepare lavish meals, you have four ingredients. I have one of that here. So this is a you get a roast all the time, and they can use pretty much everything you have allowed for cooking. So we have a roast out of salmon, dwarven wine, dwarven wine and dwarven ale. I think that's actually an exploit. I should probably stop that actually. That's called booze cooking because we get a lot of uh, booze out of, well, a skilled brewer. And I think it just either adds up or so multiplies the stack size, so you really get a lot of food. And the stack size also goes up with the uh, with skill in farming, so once your farmers g get more skills, they will harvest more than one plant at a time from a field. So if for example, those plants are grown and they are harvested by an unskilled farmer, he will get one unit of this plant for each of those fields. If we have a more skilled farmer here, then he might get, I don't know, two, three, maybe even five of that plant out of this field. And that's quite a, a difference, and it is certainly worth leveling up your farmers for that. And I'm going to... we just got some migrants, so I'll, I need to see what they are good for. And how many... oh my god! We got 25 migrants! So we basically just more than doubled the uh, fortress population, which was around 15 or so before. 17 before, so... That's a lot of migrants to get. And oh my god, it's just such a huge wave. Uh, it's really a shame you can't see the dwarf therapist right now. Because it's oh my god. No, it's it's just amazing. How many people want to live here? It's it's incredible. So our fortress is pretty much a thing now. Also, is the, no, it's not suspended. I was wondering because... oh, there it comes. Because it's usually if there is a single piece of wall that is not being taken care of, it's just a, a suspended construction. And that means the dwarves won't do it until I unsuspend it. We should also be able to fill up our military squads here. I'm going to start with the Marx Dwarves, because I kind of like those more. We have this guy, this guy, this guy, oh my, so many of them. Okay, that's it for Marxos. We're not. Go I'm not going to add uh, to add wrestlers to the Marx Dwarf squad. You're an ex-dwarf, and you're an ex-dwarf. 
we're getting a good haul. I had another fortress in, in which I had like 100 population and I could only fill up one squad uh, with melee dwarves and had like two um, I think two Marks Dwarves at all in total and that was just silly. Just look at the population I have here. I have yeah, almost half of my population drafted into military service. Beca not because I want to or I'm a militar uh, militaristic arsehole, but because they have military skills and that's kind of useful to have. Also the episode is over now. So I'm going to cut the video here and I'll see you in a moment.